Okay, thanks for asking this question there, Aiden. That's great. Question to ask, number six. It's a long question, but thanks for asking. And um, the whole situation here is that there's this astronaut. And they tell us what the weight of the astronaut is on Earth. So the weight or the force of gravity, right? Here's the equation for it right there. There's the equation for it on Earth is 1.2 times 10 to the 3 newtons. Now, they gave us a positive value, so what they're really giving us is the absolute, mag excuse me, the magnitude only of the weight, only the magnitude of the force of gravity. That's why there's no negative sign, and that's why I put these red absolute value or magnitude signs there. So I'm going to rearrange this equation and find out that the mass of the object is equal to the weight of it divided by the gravitational field strength. So the uh, mass of the astronaut is the weight of the astronaut divided by the gravitational field strength on the surface of the Earth, all in magnitude signs, since we were given the magnitude originally. And we find the mass of the astronaut to be 122.4 kilograms. Now, from your earlier reading, I hope you remember that mass does not change. So whatever the mass of the astronaut is on the Earth, it will also be the mass of the astronaut on planet X, the moon, Mars, anywhere. It doesn't change. What does change is the weight of an object, because the weight of an object, the force of gravity on an object, depends on the mass, and it also depends on where you are. Are you dealing with the Earth's gravitational field strength, Mars, moon, where are you? So very important to distinguish between mass and weight. So next, we're on planet X, and here is the space capsule. You notice how artistic I am. There's the space capsule, and here's the astronaut with a purple astronaut space suit, okay? And we're told that the astronaut is on some type of ledge here on the space capsule, which is 2.8 meters above the surface of planet X. So here, the height is 2.8 meters. The surface will say is height zero, and we're told that the gravitational potential energy of this astronaut on planet X, so it's not just EG, it's EG for planet X. So it's E subscript G and double subscript X. Gravitational potential energy on planet X, we're told, is 1.1 times 10 to the 3 joules. That is what we are told. So let me scroll down here to the first part, and we're told that we want to calculate we want to calculate what the gravitational field strength is on planet X. That's what we want to calculate right there. Well, since we're in the energy unit, we can use, and this is the section all about gravitational potential energy, we can use this equation. EG is equal to MGH. But now it's EG on planet X. Mass doesn't change, but it's GX, not G from the Earth. Not what's up G Earth, what's up G on planet X, and the height. So we're going to rearrange this by dividing each side by M. So you divide each side by M, and you divide each side by H, and you're left with this equation right here. Now, gravitational potential energy of the astronaut on planet X, we're told what that is. Pop it in there, 1.1 times 10 to the 3 joules. Mass of the astronaut is the same anywhere in the universe. We calculated it when, when it was on planet Earth. It'll work anywhere. 1.22, excuse me, 122.4 kilograms. And we're told that the astronaut is 2.8 meters above the surface of planet X. So we put that in and bingo, bango, we get our handy dandy, fancy dancy calculator out. And we calculate that the gravitational field strength near the surface of planet X, GX, and this is just the magnitude. That's why there's no negative sign. 3.2 newtons per kilogram. Definitely not the 9.8 newtons per kilogram from planet Earth. And I put this smiley face here to thank all of you kids who are going through a tough time here, but still doing physics. I'm so proud of you. Smiley, smiley, smiley. All right. Well, part B wants us to calculate time. How long does it take 
the astronaut to step off the capsule and land on the surface of planet X. So they're stepping off the capsule. They're not jumping into the air. So that means the initial velocity of the astronaut is zero. They're just going to step off and fall. And they're going to fall straight down by 2.8 meters. So the height, 2.8 meters, can be converted into a displacement of negative 2.8 meters because it's falling downwards. So we just do a little rewording there. So we want to calculate time. We find a kinematics equation because there's no energy equations that have time in it, so we're forced to go back to kinematics, but that's okay. And we realize that the initial velocity is zero, so that term disappears, it's gone, all right? And we're left with the second term here. So the equation just becomes this here. Uh, displacement is equal to half the acceleration multiplied by time squared. So we're gonna rearrange this. So we multiply each side by two. So I multiply this side by two, multiply this side by two, but two times a half is one, gone. I'm gonna divide this side by acceleration. So I have an acceleration in the bottom here in the denominator, and that's gone, okay? And then we divide the uh, this side by acceleration and it cancels out. So divide each side by acceleration and we have delta P squared as the only thing left here, and that's good, that's good, because we want to isolate for time and solve for it. So if this is a little confusing, just take your time with this algebra, work your way through it. Maybe you have to add a few extra steps on the side when you do it on a piece of paper. That's okay, but you should be able to get to that. Then we square root both sides, and we're left with this expression. And we have 2 times the displacement. Right, but since the object was 2.8 meters in the air and it falls down to the ground, a height is zero, it's actually fallen through a displacement displacement of negative 2.8 meters. There you have it. Uh, also, in part A, we calculated that the gravitational field strength near the surface of planet X was 3.2 newtons per kilogram. So we're going to remember the relationship between gravitational field strength and acceleration due to gravity and realize that that means then that the acceleration is 3.2 meters per second squared with a negative sign because gravity pulls things downward. It's obviously, the gravitational field on this planet X is not as strong as the Earth's. So therefore, the acceleration due to gravity will not be as strong as it is on the Earth. It's not negative 9.8 meters per second squared on planet X. It's negative 3.2 meters per second squared. But it's still negative because it's still bringing things down, pulling downward. And thank goodness it's negative because now we have a negative in the denominator, a negative in the numerator, which makes the whole fraction or the entire fraction, the entire quotient, positive. All right, and we really need that because you can't find the square root of a negative number. So it was really important that we have negative upstairs, negative downstairs. And then you get your handy dandy, fancy dancy calculator out, you plug it in, and you calculate a time of 1.3 seconds. And here's a star for all you kids listening to this little video clip. And thanks again, Aiden, for asking this question. And we're going to continue now on to part C. Continuing on to part C, part C wants us to find the final velocity of the astronaut as the astronaut hits the surface of the planet X at a height of zero, I'm going to hit the surface. So I'm going to find an equation that has final velocity in it. There it is. And also has quantities that I know that I can use. Well, we just use the acceleration, negative 3.2 meters per second squared. We calculated time from before, 1.3 seconds, and we know the initial velocity was zero. So what I can do is take this equation and rearrange it into this one right here. We've done this many times in class when we were together. Uh, so you might want to go back and look at your notes if you don't remember how to do that. But there it is. I've rearranged the equation. There you have it. And now I'm remembering that this term, initial velocity, is zero. So it's just final velocity is equal to the acceleration multiplied by the time. And that's what I've done here. And I've substituted right here. Acceleration multiplied by time. I multiply these together, and I get negative 4.2 meters per second squared. Thank goodness we got a negative sign because the object is falling downward. And here's a little bit of snow for you kids because I hear it's going to snow on the weekend. 
All right, so there you have it. Hope you're working away. Hope you're all safe and happy, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.